Okay, so you made it through the dynamic programming neoclassical growth model lecture, and you're cursing me. You know, like, you know, this guy's a real POS. I don't like him. Um, I get it. Maybe dynamic programming just, you know, maybe it's just not your thing. Maybe you don't really want to do it. Maybe you want to see what is potentially easier. Maybe you just want to keep your options open. I don't know. It could be any of those things, right? So I decided that there's another way we can do this. Actually, I didn't decide there's another way we can do this. There's always been another way to do this. I decided I would teach you how to do this other thing. So let's say you have that problem, right? Max of CT or maxing CT of this utility function, t goes from zero to infinity of beta to the t times natural log of ct. And you're doing it subject to the constraint c equals output minus investment. And you don't want to use dynamic programming. What do you do? Well, this is kind of cheating, sort of. Is it makes it a two-period problem, but it has similar results in the context of the course. So you can take the utility function and turn it into a two-period problem. And if you do that, it gives us u of ct and ct plus 1 equals the natural log of ct plus beta times the natural log of ct plus 1. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, really, that doesn't look that different from the Bellman equation, does it? Not really. But here's the thing. We need two constraints instead of one. So for the Bellman equation, you have one constraint. Here you need two constraints. Right, so what I do is I take equation two, which was this constraint, right? I take that and I update it one period. And that gives me our second constraint. So I my first constraint and my second constraint. So anywhere you see a T, you add one to it. And that's your second constraint, right? So CT plus one equals AT plus one times KT plus one to the alpha minus KT plus two plus one minus delta KT plus one. Cool. Wait a minute. There's no t plus 2, right? It's a two-period problem. Just like what you saw in Chapter 5. It's just the constraint's different. Actually, it's the exact same thing you saw in Chapter 5. It's just a different constraint. The world ends in t plus 1. So the constraint for period t plus 1 is simply a t plus 1 times k t plus 1 to the alpha plus 1 minus delta k t plus 1. There you go. So I take equations 4 and 6. What was equation 4? Well, 4 is that constraint today. Equation 6 is tomorrow's constraint. I plug them into CT and CT plus 1 for equation 3, and that gives me this guy. Now I've got U of KT and KT plus 1 equals the natural log of AT, KT to the alpha, minus KT plus 1, plus 1 minus delta KT. All right, we've seen that constraint ad nauseum. All right, what that says, second one plus beta times a natural log of AT plus 1, KT plus 1 to the alpha, plus 1 minus delta, KT plus 1. Okay. It's not too bad. Now, from equation 7, you want to take the derivative with respect to KT plus 1 and set it equal to 0. Why are we taking the derivative with respect to KT plus 1? Well, the same reason we are in the lecture on the neoclassical growth model, where we did the dynamic programming. The intuition is the same. The thought process is the exact same. It's just the way you're doing the math is a little bit different. So that derivative is, and what I'm doing here is to save space so that this thing will actually fit on the slide. I'm swapping out CT equals that stuff and CT plus 1 equals that stuff to save some space. So I get partial of U of KT and KT plus 1 with respect to KT plus 1 equals 1 over CT times negative 1 plus beta times 1 over ct plus 1 times alpha times at plus 1 times kt plus 1 to the alpha minus 1 plus 1 minus delta, and that equals 0. Okay, so you just get your two constraints, right? And you plug them in for ct and ct plus 1. And then you just take one derivative across the board with respect to kt plus 1. And that gives you this right here. You set that equal to 0, right? You add 1 over ct to both sides, and that gives you equation 8, which is exactly the Euler equation you saw in the first lecture of this chapter, right? It's the Euler equation from dynamic programming stuff that we saw. So 
You can use either method, right? Because both of them work. The thing is, if you use this, you're going to end up doing more algebra, and it can get a little tedious um, because you've got two constraints instead of just one. So if you're comfortable playing around with a lot of constraints, um, this is going to be the way to go for you. If you're like, ah, I don't know, it can get a little tedious, it's going to get a little ugly, um, maybe I want to take my chances with the calculus, dynamic programming would be the way for you. Because with dynamic programming, you have one constraint and two derivatives. For the two-period model, you've got two constraints and one derivative. And either one works. Whichever one you feel more comfortable with, use it. Um, if you'd like to stay away from the calculus, do the two-period model. If you're like, maybe I can get used to the calculus a little bit, um, try the dynamic programming. Try both and make sure you can get the answer the same way. If you get the answer the same way, you know you did them both right. Or you did them both horribly wrong and by chance you got the wrong answer. Um, let's assume that you know you did it right. So if you choose the two-period model, yeah, the constraints can get a little long. The constraint here was simple. It wasn't that bad. Um, the re remaining models have constraints that get a little bit more complicated. So it can be a little difficult to keep it straight with like two constraints each time, but it still works. It can just get a little tedious and cumbersome. End of the day, your choice. I grade each one with equal credit. Um, I will think no less of you if you do this one versus dynamic programming. I will think no more or less of you if you do dynamic programming instead of this. Whichever one works for you is the one that works for me. Because either way, you're learning the math, you're learning the intuition behind the math, you're learning about the optimization problem and how all this stuff works. So, um, yeah, that wraps up this lecture. I know this one was short, but uh, it's just, you know, two-period problem. Um, so... Yeah, whichever one works for you works for me. Um, I encourage you to use either one. I encourage you to use both if you want. Uh, but thank you for watching, and there will be more coming. So, bye.